Avatar, The Way of Water, the fun and exciting sequel to James Cameron's 2009 blockbuster Avatar, is meant to be a major technological step forward in how movies are shown. We'll find out in time if that's true. But the truth is that many people will find it frustrating to watch the movie in what is thought to be the best format. The long-awaited 192-minute film, which reportedly cost between $250 million and $400 million to make, was shown to the press for the first time in theaters that could show it at a high frame rate, HFR. You may have seen this in Gemini Man, Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk, or Peter Jackson's Hobbit Trilogy. Director-slash-explorer, Cameron, in October said he had found a simple hack that would change the game. In short, he used new technology to make the way of water switch between the usual 24 frames per second and 48 frames per second. This appears to be a good compromise on paper. However, watching a full HFR movie is preferable than three or more hours of the shifting dynamic without the option to simply settle into one or the other. You can't ride two horses with one behind, to quote an old adage. And given how much of the movie is actually excellent, this is even more upsetting. Avatar, The Way of Water is a simple, fascinating story and a stunning setting. It's over three hours long, and it takes a third of that to start. Once former human marine turned Pandoran native Jake Sully, Sam Worthington, his Navi mate Neytiri, Zoe Salda, and their four half Navi, half Avatar children escape the forest, the sense of amazement hits like a tidal wave. A group of Navi gather at night for a ceremony, standing knee-deep in water and holding torches, with Navi played by Kate Winslet and Cliff Curtis presiding, in Avatar, The Way of Water. The plot is straightforward. After the events of Avatar, the Sky People, the rapacious, militarized humans of the Resources Development Administration, have returned to Pandora, and this time they want something even more elusive than the material on Obtanium. Without giving anything away, Let's just say that taking this substance from Pandora is not only harmful, but also a crime against all the Navi hold dear. Colonel Miles Quaritch, Stephen Lang, resurrected in a cloned Navi avatar body, is leading the charge to assassinate the traitorous slash insurgent Jake Sully and will stop at nothing. Hurrah! The action picks up in the second hour. Moving live with an aquatic tribe of Navi and adapting to their aquatic culture, Jake and Neytiri's family becomes a collective fish out of water. Cameron's rich immersion in his constructed world is most satisfying here. It takes roughly an hour to simply float around a reef. The Sully kids get into fights with the neighborhood bullies, the strange daughter discovers how to plug her hair into sponges and reefs, and the darling runt transforms into a translucent floaty bird and zooms around. It lasts a long time, and the show of visual ingenuity is stunning. Things really heat up in the third hour. Cameron, an action director with few peers, is having a dialogue with himself, raising the stakes and putting his own resume to the test. There's a thrilling, emotional chase, followed by a propulsive, intense, and unique daytime combat scenario. It featured a massive marine beast coming in off the top rope in a way that had the audience cheering. Cameron isn't recognized as a funny director, but his action sequences have always had a humorous edge to them. Cameron may have reacquainted himself with Sam Raimi's work. Perhaps he's drinking from the same cup as S.S. Rajamuli, the man behind the brilliant, utterly ridiculous Indian import RRR. Cameron goes all the way into frenetic mayhem in the way of water, smash-cutting from one absurd visual to the next. The closing act of this film demonstrates a liberating attitude in his action that he's never completely embraced before, even in action that's superficially similar, such as the big sinking ship sequence in Titanic. James Cameron has previous experience in this field, but this time around he appears to be having a lot more fun. The Way of Water is unlikely to be a financial watershed on the same scale as 2009's Avatar. Back then, 3D technology was so fresh, and world-building and the utilization of CGI environments were both unparalleled. It was a once-in-a-generation advancement in film technology and immersive storytelling. The Manor of Water, like Disney's previous sequel Disenchanted, arrives in a cinematic universe that has been profoundly transformed by its predecessor, and there are no innovations here that propel filmmaking forward in the same way. 
The movie earned $134 million from North American theaters and $300.5 million internationally for a $434.5 million global debut week which is short of expectations. The movie was expected to open domestically between $150-$175 million. Let's see how the next few weeks fare.